Hello and God bless you, brothers and sisters. My name is Reverend Jared Reed Smith, and I'm a minister here at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church, where my pastor is, Dr. Johnny Calvin Smith. God bless you, brothers and sisters. We're excited. I know I am excited to have you study God's word with me on today, thanking God for you. I want to let you know that we'd love for you to be a part of the Mount Moriah worship experience. Sunday morning worship actually starts with our in-person Sunday school. Now, of course, I share this with you, but please join us in person for more in-depth application and elaboration and good communication between brothers and sisters in God's word. Join us Sunday morning at 10 a.m. here at our church. And then immediately following Sunday school, we go into our morning worship experience, which is at 11 a.m. Wednesday night, Finding Time with God. That is our adult Bible series. You're welcome to join us. Please join us. There is a link in the description of this video where you can join us via Zoom or you can join us via live stream on our YouTube page on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Of course, if you'd like to be a blessing to the Mount Moriah Church, Please know that there is a link in the description of this video where you can give according to that which God has placed upon your heart. I believe that's all of our announcements. Let's get into our word. But before we do, let's pray. Gracious God, we say thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this word. Thank you, the Lord, for this day. We just pray that you please bless your word like only you can. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our lesson for today comes from the book of John, the gospel according to John, and thanking God for this study. I love the book of John. Our lesson topic is the light of the world. And then our lesson scriptures, of course, is John chapter 8, verses 12 through 20. And then we'll skip over to John uh, chapter 12, verses 44 through 46. Our golden text comes from John chapter 8, verse 12. Now, Brothers and sisters, you know, as I introduced us in the book of John on last week, that we are studying uh, some of those I am statements. Uh, last week, we learned that Jesus is the bread of life. And any person that takes part of that bread, meaning that they trust in him, which is that's what they were asking, right? They said, how do we get this? They were trying to figure out what they needed to do in order to get this bread. These were just some hungry people that wanted their physical needs being met. Jesus was trying to meet them on a spiritual level and help them understand that if you eat of this bread, you'll never be hungry again. Now we come to understand that Jesus is the light of the world. What I like about the text is that in this text, Jesus had just healed a blind man before, I'm sorry, before and after he heals a blind man. And we'll see that in the text in John chapter 8 that this was this this statement was stated before and after he healed a blind man. Let's jump into our text uh, for today. I'm definitely excited about our text uh, for today. But of course, as always, I like to give you a brief outline for consideration. Verses, I believe that's verses 12 through 16, the offer of light. Verses 17 through 20, the offer of witnesses. And then chapter 12, verses 44 through 46, the offer of escape from darkness. Now, as I'm going to tell the young people in their video, when Jesus says he's a light, he's not talking about he's a flashlight. Uh, he's, that's what he's talking about. He's the light of the world. And so we'll get into that. Let's look at our verses. Now, of course, in verse 12, the word of God says, now this is the uh, conflict that Jesus is going to have. We're going to notice a conflict because he's going to make a, a starch claim. And he makes many I am statements uh, in the text. Uh, but now we get into, and John is the one that records all of these I am statements. Here's one of them. The I am the light of the world. Look at verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So we definitely, brothers and sisters, know that we live in a world uh, that is definitely gone astray. We don't even have to turn on the radio, don't have to turn on the TV, but Jesus is saying that he is the light of the world. There is only one hope for dispelling darkness, and that darkness is only dispelled by the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who makes this claim to these Pharisees, and he tells them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me 
uh, that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. It is likely that Jesus was teaching uh, them during this time, no doubt that there was probably some large lamps that were lit and the people uh, were doing all the different things. So Jesus is now, he exposes, exposes what was going on. And that was nothing but some darkness that was around. And so Jesus is saying that I am the light of the world. He exposes this thing. And of course, darkness in this is symbolic of sin. So, you know, it's kind of like I told the young people in Sunday school last week. You say, well, you know, Jesus says I'm the bread of life. That doesn't mean just because we trust in him that we will never be hungry again physically. But he's talking about is spiritually. So when he talks about him being the light of the world, he's not saying that we will not experience what we would think of as maybe physical darkness. If I go over to this light switch, I will be, I'm in a room with no windows. I will be in the dark, but I still have Jesus who is the light of the world. And so what he's talking about is sin. Jesus is saying that darkness is, some, is symbolic of sin. Uh, you can even think about this. And when you think about darkness, it's, it's not being able, and you understand when you're dark, you don't know where you're going. He's talking about the life that sin had and had us bound in. But when I have uh, when I have the light of the world, Jesus even says that I am the light as well. Uh, and I shouldn't hide it under a bushel and so forth and so on. But it helps me to understand that, that that directs my path. Having him as my light, it directs my path. When I'm walking in darkness, I have no aim. I have no direction. So Jesus says that I am the light of the world. Let's go forward now. Here we go. Verse 13 and 14. Let's couple that together. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto to them, though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true for I know whence I came and whether I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whether I go. See, as usual, the Pharisees were challenging Jesus. Without even thinking, at least we don't see any evidence in the text. They just open up their mouth and say, you talking about yourself and what you're saying is not true. See, that what they're saying is that he uh, that they he was trying to validate himself, talking about Jesus, that you're bearing record of yourself. Like you have no proof of what you're saying. Jesus' response was that he could bear witness to himself because his words were always the truth. In addition, he knew where he had come from, which was the father in heaven, and he knew where he was going was back to the father. They knew nothing about this. While this might not have sounded like good evidence to them, it was all the evidence that was needed because Jesus knew exactly where he where he came from and where he was going. And brothers and sisters, in a brief application, we should have that same knowledge that we don't have to prove. I told the young people the other day, we don't have to prove anything to anyone. We know who we are. We are blood bought believers and we know where we're going. Where are we going? Soon and very soon, we're going to meet the king. And so we don't have to worry about those that are looking for proof. If you want proof, just hold up your 66 books. That's all I got for you. And so I always say that that's just a brief application that I want you to make from there. Look at verse 15 and 16. Ye judge after the flesh. You judge now for what you see. I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true for I am not alone, but I am the father that sent me. See, Jesus is saying basically that the Pharisees judgment was according to what they see, which is what the flesh. That is by what they could see and what they could hear. Uh, they looked at the external instead of what was really the eternal. Come on, somebody. They were looking nothing at but, but what they would see. They were judging by human standards and not by really what was the word of God. Jesus said that he would not judge the way they did because he says, I judge no man, but that when the time did come, because there will be a come a time, you can go into your scripture and you can know in the book of Philippians that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven 
of things in earth and things that are unearthed. And every tongue uh, should confess that Jesus is Lord. And that, that day will come, brothers and sisters. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, I had to make sure I understand. I was turning in my Bible, Philippians 2 and 10, that at the name of Jesus, there will come a day that all of those that have rejected Jesus, I promise you those needs shall bow. In other words, they will acknowledge Jesus Christ as King and Lord. And then you'll come to understand that this was the truth all of the while. Look at verses 17 and 18. It says, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Now, Jesus, well, let me read verse 18 as well, because he's going to go back to the Mosaic law. I am one that bear witness of myself, but look who my second witness is. I love this. And the father that sent me bears witness of me. See, Jesus goes back to the Mosaic law. And because it was because you had to have two witnesses or three witnesses, according to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse six, if you want to go back and read that for your reference. See, the ref, the Pharisees were trying to apply this, uh, this principle uh, to Jesus because they said that you remember back in there, uh, look at verse, uh, verse there, there it is, verse 13. They said that thou bearest record of thyself. In other words, you're one person. So they're saying, according to our law, uh, talking about the Mosaic law, according to this law, you should at least have someone that can validate. Jesus says, I have my validation. Who's my validation? I'm glad you asked. Verse 17, I'm sorry, verse 18, the father that sent me beareth witness. Because you don't even understand who I am to begin with. Because why? Because you're judging after what? Verse 15, the flesh. So he, he uses this, he applies the Mosaic law. The Pharisees tried to apply it to him. Jesus applies it right back. So now Jesus proceeded to point out that the law did require it. And he's like, yeah, you're right. Two witnesses for validation, but I haven't. I'm, I'm validating myself and my father is validating. See, John's gospel had already established the fact that John the Baptist had come as a witness to bear witness for Jesus. And, and we see many times where those that came to try to be bear witnesses to bear witness for Jesus, there had already been plenty of proof. John, uh, who was sent by God to be the forerunner, John the Baptist that I'm referencing right now, he was sent to be a forerunner, John chapter one, verse seven, John chapter five, verse 33. And even there was others. So there was a lot of proof, but the Pharisees refused to acknowledge. That's the issue. It wasn't the proof, it's the fact that you did not want to perceive, you didn't want to acknowledge who Jesus is. So look at verse 19 and verse 20. It says, then said they unto him, talking about the Pharisees, where is thy father? Jesus answered, you neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasure as he taught in the temple and no man laid hands on him for his hour has not yet, had not yet come. So Jesus was claiming and he was going to claim his father as his witness. Of course, the Pharisees wanted to know where his father was. So Jesus, of course, they were trying to speak on human terms, but Jesus wanted to know that you definitely don't know me now because if you knew who I really was, then you would know exactly where my father really is. Y'all catching up what I'm trying to tell you all? I think I'm laying it pretty plain. He says that you don't really understand who I am because if you knew who I, who I was, then you know where my father was. My father is in heaven. He sent me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so now we turn over, if you don't mind, brothers and sisters, we're going to look at uh, verse, verses 45, verses 44, I'm sorry, 44 and 45 together. Now we turn over to chapter 12. Let's turn over to chapter 12, verse 44 and 45. Jesus cried and said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. 
And this is no surprise because Jesus had already, he had made a claim once before that he that seen me, uh, that seen me has seen the father. He that seen me uh, has seen uh, the father. And so he makes that claim even in John chapter 14, uh, verse nine. And so Jesus makes claims of such because there was always a special union and communion with God, the father and Jesus, his son. So he makes this claim. Jesus assured the people in chapter 12 that anyone who believed in him was at the same time believing in God, his father. You know, how can you, where, where can you get that from Reverend Jared? Because to be honest with you, if you go to the book or chapter 14, we're in the book of John, but go to chapter 14. If y'all want to run with me real quick, let's look at verse, uh, look at verse 14. See, because what I come to understand that I can't have one without the other. Oh, I'm about to make sense in just a second. Go to chapter 14. Jesus is in the upper room and he's talking to his disciples and he tells them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I'm giving you the proof. He just said it in the text. Did y'all catch that? Jesus is helping them to understand that if you're believing in me, then you're also believing in the Father. Look at verse 40, uh, 44 again. Jesus cried and said, he, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Jesus goes in chapter 14 and says, you believe in me, uh, ye believe in God, believe also in me, in my father's house or many mansions. He goes in, and if it were if it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Thomas, he goes on and he says, uh, we don't know whether thou goest, and how can we know? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There was always a special union and communion with God and the Father. So he goes on in verse 46 and he says, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. If we're walking in darkness today, brothers and sisters, which is symbolic of sin and unbelief, that is our fault. Jesus has given us light because he is the light and because he has given us light to shine to other people. Once Jesus has now made this claim, he came as a light into this world and whosoever believes in him shall never, we don't have to walk in darkness. You shall not walk in darkness. See what he's talking about is spiritual darkness, spiritual understanding. It's sometimes difficult, of course, for unbelievers to comprehend the reality without this lack of understanding. But what we should be glad is God turned on the light of our heart and had us to accept him, uh, God, God through the precious power of the Holy Spirit ignited something with us that when someone told us about the gospel, that we accepted God or accepted Jesus as our personal savior. And as a result, we don't live in darkness anymore. We don't have to be a part of darkness because we have the light of the world. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I pray that something has been said that has been a pleasing to God and edified to his body. Don't forget to join us on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, and we would love to you to be a part as we continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Have a great week.